Hello, this is Blue Star, defender of Equestria, and this is my introductory slash Cliff Notes version to foam smithing. <laughs> and look, welcome to my lovely disaster area. I mean, a workshop. <laughs> what can I say? It's a workshop. It's supposed to be messy. Actually, no, it's not. It's supposed to be clean, but. <laughs> My regular subscribers are probably wondering what's going on right now because this is not the kind of video that I do. And frankly, I'm still learning this. I'm definitely going to say off the bat, just about everything I'm about to show you I learned from Evil Ted Smith, so you should definitely go check out him and watch his videos because he's awesome! But I'm going to attempt to do this in kind of the way I do best, which is just to do a summary of what of how of the basic techniques and the techniques that I really like that I've learned from Evil Ted Smith. And I'm going to do this by making a pair of snow frost spectacles for this! Hello, everypody! I'm Starlight Glimmer! <laughs> this all basically started when, um, the person who made this plushie also was making me a Blue Star plushie, and, um, basically I looked at the glass and said, mm, they're pretty good, but they're still really thick, because, you know, they're based off of my glasses, which are really thin. So I said to him, oh, I'll make some out of Eva foam. And and then he asked me, oh, could you, like, show me some lessons or do, yeah, show me how to do stuff in Eva foam? He's like, I figure... Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to use this as an excuse to try to do a video like this, which I've been kind of wanting to do for a while, but still kind of learning this, so I'm sure this video will go horribly wrong, but hopefully you will still learn something. <laughs> In some ways, that's sort of the first lesson when doing foam smithing and making things like this, is that, you know, the first time you make it, it may not go right, and you're going to have to redo it again. I have a saying from model airplanes, don't force a bad landing, that if it's if you're, you're just way off, just go around and try again. And it can be kind of hard. It's like, I spent all this time on this part. It, it just, I, I can't just give it up. And sometimes you have no choice. You have to make it work. But uh, sometimes you just gotta say, this part's no good. Or, oh, it could use a little bit more curve. It's a little bit too long or a little too short. I have to do it again. And then you'd make it again. Then it's good. So, you hope. So anyway, before we get going, things you'll definitely be needing. Exacto blades. I prefer ones of different sizes. A box cutter for cutting the really thick foam. Something that's good to have is a sharpener to sharpen the box cutter. A Dremel or a other similar rotary tool. By the way, this one's cordless. A lot of them have are cords, but I do find that the cordless one is uh, <laughs> definitely a huge plus. And it's definitely a good idea to get one of these, a self-healing mat for cutting on. I am going to make a pair of spectacles like this for this plushie. There's parts of me that almost think I could almost just cut out this image, maybe shrink it down a little bit and just cut that piece of foam out and then I'd be done. But I'm going to try to show the, uh, the quote-unquote, the foam spiffing way of doing this, which is... Um, which is that I'm going to actually make a um, a template of this ridge and then I'm going to cut it out with foam. Image. Definitely get images of them and in, in ways, yeah, make them as big as you can so you can see all the details. It's like, it doesn't look that hard until you actually look at it and realize, I thought when I first looked at this, I thought this piece was just straight, but oh no, it's... This, no, this piece is actually slightly curved. It's not massively curved, but it's curved a little bit. And definitely look at it from multiple angles. I mean, from here, there's no surprises, but uh, uh, definitely learned when uh, doing my OC that, for example, I used these this image as um, the beginning of um, my OC. And the problem is, is that I made mine straight because of this image, they sort of looks straight. I mean, I know that in the end, uh, I think I did mess up regardless, but yeah, from this angle, it kind of looks like they're straight, even though they're really not. It was only when I looked at this image and like over here, you can clearly see that they're curved. So yeah, get multiple images from multiple angles and definitely look at everything before you start designing because you don't want, you want to learn these things before you start making them. Again, I could sort of just cheat. I mean, this is relatively simple, that this is just basically two circles and a connecting, I was gonna say bar or piece that goes across. I could almost do this by just simply cutting a straight piece and just bending it, but again, I'm gonna make a um, a template of that. So let's get to that then. Because this is a plushie and it's I don't really want to damage it, so I'm gonna put this piece of uh, wax paper over it in a minute. So what I need, so what I need now is I need a little bit of aluminum foil or tin foil or some other kind of crinkly material that you can use. Because what we're gonna attempt to do is cover the cover the area that I'm interested in with the aluminum foil and then cover it with duct tape. So, so again, so I'm going to take this and put this under here. I think that will do. Again, this is going to be kind of a rough kind of a thing and we could probably just heat form it. So now I'm going to take a little bit of this tape.
Oops. <laughs> I think I'm going to put another piece on to make sure that it holds that shape. So I'm going to use the silver sharpie and this piece of foam to sort of mark where I want the thing to be. Because in this case, all I really need to know is basically I just need that shape. I just need basically the shape of that. So, okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off. <laughs> put starlight glimmer over here now so this is why i'm pretty sure this video is gonna go horribly wrong because i'm trying to figure out how do i take this and make that because this actually has a lot more curve than this does but i'm thinking that okay if i just cut this whole thing out and then i can maybe just extend it a little bit or just simply just glue the eyepiece the, the actual lens itself just onto the side of it so <laughs> and that's what it, that's the joy of uh foam spiffing is that it's all about problem solving as evil ted says that it's all about figuring out how to solve this problem you're trying to make this thing that just flat doesn't exist so <laughs> so that's the problem that you have i think i'm just gonna cheat i'm just gonna cut the whole darn thing out and then i'll, I'll figure out where do i need to end the piece first now you're saying how can i take this thing that's basically in three dimensions and lay it flat onto a piece of foam and cut out a piece the answer is you have to create a dart somewhere so that you can lay this piece flat and then you glue it back together since this is this way i could just simply take a pair of scissors like this one and i will simply cut it now that i have that dart now i can just simply take this apart and just cut it out with my all-powerful exacto blade i have two of them this is a bigger one and a smaller one <laughs> Unfortunately, I forget the names of the blades, but yeah, I, I like to have a variety of uh, different tools. I think I'll use the smaller one. So yeah, so we use the smaller one and we'll just cut this out. I'll cut on the outside this time. And that is actually our little template. I mean, this is a case for making something really, really small. Normally, I make really, really big parts. Like, this is a template for basically a piece of arm armor. So, <laughs> so it's kind of unusual. But again, it's like, okay, so. But we're going to keep going down this road, and we're going to see if it works out or not. So, <laughs> which again is sort of almost part of being a folk smith, is that you just got to just try it. And if it works, yay! And if it doesn't work, try it again and find out. But it, and, and try something else. But at least you've learned something. I think definitely in another rule when it comes to foam smithing is when in doubt, just try it. Because if all because you won't learn anything by not trying. So now that we have our little template ready for cutting, we need some foam. And what kind of foam? Like, and this is the kind of foam I use. It's it's called Eva foam, and uh, it comes from a variety of places. You can get it from one or two places. This is from TNT Cosplay. <laughs> Ta-da! TNT Cosplay. <laughs> And the big plus of this is that it's smooth on both sides, which is a huge time saver. Because the other alternative is to buy something like this, which obviously I've cut. It's basically floor mat foam. It's the same kind of material, but it, you can get this at places like Home Depot or those sorts of things. And, they, and they're basically either part of floor mats or these sort of like tile things. They usually only come in one. I think they come. They might come in a variety of thicknesses, but generally there's just one. But these are a little bit more readily available. Like you can just go down to the store and just buy some. Whereas with this, you have to order it, and it may take a couple days for you to get it. Uh, and unfortunately, yeah, they only ship within the continental United States because uh, shipping giant boxes of foam or anything is just really expensive and the shipping will be way more than the foam itself so anyway i believe that this is a uh, four millimeter and i am going to just simply take uh to make things a little bit easier for me i'm just going to take my box cutter and when you go up to like the much thicker things like this the, the 10 millimeter you definitely want one of these but i'm going to use this basically to cut this just cut a little piece so i can get this a uh, little bit smaller and a little bit more manageable than having this giant roll so when cutting foam Basically what you want to do is you want to make sure you, the knife is touching the table so that you know you're cutting all the way through. And then keep it level and then just pull. And that was not that was not too bad. The key to cutting foam is a sharp knife. So you need a sharpener like this. I mean, I'm not so sure if my technique is correct, but I sharpen it like this. Alright, point at 45. One way. I do 45. The other way. And I will be including links to these things. I'll be including uh, Evil Ted's links because uh, he actually uses them to basically fund his videos. And I want to support him. So, yo -ho. Now that we have our foam, there's basically two choices. We could either just take this and just put it on there and use the silver sharpie and just uh, draw, um, draw it out. Or 
you can put it on a piece of poster board and draw the, draw it on here, cut it out, and then put it on there. Which is generally a better idea, especially if this is a template that you're going to be using over and over and over again. But uh, I think in this case, I'm just going to just put it on. Uh, I'm not going for absolute precision on this one, which sadly, I, I think I really do. So. <laughs> so now I'm just going to take my Sharpie. Make sure you put that, that you mark where that little dart is. So now we just take this off. Like definitely make sure you mark these little darts because that's really key to making this work. So there is our part. Hmm, this didn't come quite the way that I was hoping for. So I'm going to use the all powerful Dremel. I could just use some sandpaper, but I think just a little blast on the Dremel or other suitable rotary tool as they're called. And um, that should take just to care of that. Definitely when using rotary tool definitely start slow and work your way up because the Dremel has the ability to basically just burn through this on, on its highest setting like it's nothing so especially when you're doing stuff like that. So at first I thought hmm this isn't really working because that's barely curving at all. Yeah definitely that dart I made wasn't big enough. Just make that dart just a little bit bigger using the exacto blade. Just make the dart just a little bit bigger. Okay so now I've widened that a little bit. I think that's not great. That's not spectacular. But then again, this is not going to be a spectacular piece. It's not like some pieces where like you're making a helmet. So, but still, that's the basic idea is that you put a little bend in that. So now that that matches you know, relatively, again, we'll probably just heat form it a little bit. Now that I have the piece here, now I can see approximately where I want it to go. So I want it to be about there and about <laughs> so now we have our little piece that we're ready to glue so let's talk about glue in this case I'm gonna use this Sino acrylic uh otherwise known as CA more commonly referred to as super glue <laughs> um, the advantages of this glue is that it basically dries really really fast and it's really simple to use you just put some on you wait you hold it for like 10 seconds and then it dries the disadvantages of this stuff is pretty nasty and, and uh it definitely creates lots of fumes and using it in large quantities uh would definitely be a good idea to use uh, almost in a way a respirator or you use this for like add-on parts or details and things for much larger pieces this stuff barge which is basically contact cement is a pretty good choice because I always like to think of this stuff as like liquid rubber. You have to let it sit for like five minutes or you have to use a hair dryer or to basically accelerate the uh, drying process. And then you put the two parts together and now they're basically joined by almost what's like liquid rubber. And it's much more flexible and uh, you can get this stuff in big huge cans and stuff. And it's, I would say, much more suitable in general for like costuming and stuff. And things are going to be moving. Certainly like if you need to apply lots of glue everywhere. It's, I think this is a good glue. I must admit, I'm still learning how to use it because it is a contact adhesive and it's a little bit different. You just don't put it on and just stick the part together like you can with CA. But overall, I think this is a pretty good glue and it almost feels like when in doubt, barge. But uh, still, whatever glue works for you. Another kind of glue that a lot of people like to use is hot glue. Uh, I must admit, I'm not really a fan of hot glue because, well, it's hot and it burns you and it's stuff. So, oh, I mean, you should almost always be wearing gloves when working with glue because, like with CA, if it gets on your fingers, it'll like make your fingers really hard. And the only way I know how to get it off is with nail polish or rover. And even then, sometimes it won't come off and it's just annoying. But with this stuff, you get it on your fingers and it really gets stuck. It's like, ah! The advantages of this is that you just simply take one of these sticks, you put it in here, you let it heat up a little bit, you squirt it on the part, you take the two parts, you put them together, and you let it cool a little bit, and now it's done, and you're done. Kind of like CA, which is, you know, a much more quicker kind of a glue. The disadvantage is that it's hot, and if you get it on your fingers, you could burn yourself. I, mean, I, I kind of burnt myself <laughs> pretty good one time. It wasn't like I had to go to the emergency room or any, anything, but it wasn't pleasant <laughs> at all. Oh, and it hurt for like a couple days, so yeah. But of course, whatever works for you is what works for you, and that's fine. There's in a way no wrong ways to do stuff as long as it works. Now the last kind of glue I'm going to talk about is 30 Minute in the Poxy, one of my personal favorites. I almost think of it as a structural glue. How this glue works is there's a resin and a hardener. You mix both in equal amounts, and then you put them on the part and then you push the parts together and you somehow hold them there for at least 30 minutes. And after that, the glue basically hardens. Yes, the glue is technically dry in 30 minutes, 
but this glue works on basically a chemical process which means it has to cure and that process takes a full 24 hours so if you want this stuff to be rock solid and strong you have to take that part and leave it for a full 24 hours so if you have to sit there and hold this don't use this glue but if you're trying to glue something strong look i used it on the butt stock of my blaster because that part had to be really physically strong because literally the blaster is going to be up against my shoulder so that part had to be very strong and that's the kind of thing you use this stuff for now that we've gotten that out of the way because i'm sure some of you are wondering what why are you doing this why do you just glue the darn part together come on the purpose of this video is to sort of give you an overview of all these kinds of things so that you are better equipped to make the kind of decisions to what glue works best for you and at what time. We have a lot of things in foam smithing and just in general, like sometimes it's a matter of the right tool for the right job. So now let's get on to the actual gluing. So first off, I've laid some uh, wax paper down because the problem with uh, CA is that this stuff flows everywhere and you definitely don't want it getting it on the table and stuff because ugh. You don't have to wear gloves, but I strongly recommend that you do because again, getting this stuff off your fingers is a real pain and I don't like it. And I've, It's happened too many times and I just don't want to do it with deal with it anymore and also wear old clothes when you're doing this stuff that you don't mind getting covered in glue paint or dust from sanding and stuff it's like definitely don't wear your nice clothes while doing this because it'll probably get covered in foam or dust and glue and bleh. so anyway enough of this i'm finally going to glue this part which is unfortunately just going to take a second so yeah i'm just going to open this up a little bit and just put a little drop in there so now i'm going to take this and just push it closed like this And just use my glove to just and that's the other reason why you can wear gloves i don't i i do not fear touching that glue and just pushing it aside so yeah so now i'm gonna just push so now that has actually come out not so bad at first i was concerned oh there wasn't enough like curve but that's now you can see it's like all you know by cutting that little dart out that's made that whole piece curve so now i'm going to move on to making the actual lenses and how i'm going to do that well the frames for the lenses anyway <laughs> but yeah you if you really want to you could cut a piece of like plastic or something and put a lens in there but i'm just going to leave them open but anyway i'm going to do this by using this and this because a sneaky trick from evil ted that i really like is you get a brass pipe you sharpen one end and then you just simply push it into the foam and now comes out a perfect circle. But first, I need to decide how big do I want the frame to be. And I almost kind of want to use this picture as a base for that. So yeah, I'm going to maybe start with that. That might actually be okay. And obviously using the plushie. Yeah, I think that'll be close. Again, I'm going for, unfortunately, as with most of my stuff, I'm going for good enough. <laughs> the only person you have to satisfy is you. Unless, of course, you're competing in some kind of prop contest, and then you have to obviously satisfy the judges. So now using this template, I will just simply draw out the circle. And another one while we're at it. Now I shall use my trusty X-Acto blade to cut this out. So, that's not too bad. I mean, if I happened to have a pipe that was that size, I would just simply cut it out. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pipe. So now that we're in the middle, push. <clears throat> So that didn't come out too badly, didn't come out too good either, but <laughs> so now we're going to take a look. I would say that's, that's close, that's pretty close. So that clearly didn't really work out very well. So I'm going to try doing that again, but I'm going to have the whole thing of the foam, so this time I could put, there we go, that, that worked, oh, there we go, that worked really well. That worked really well. So now I'm going to take the... Uh, Sacto blade, and that it's not too bad. I think I'm just going to use the Dremel and clean this up a little bit. So, ta-da! There it is. It's not great, but again, I think for the purposes of this video and what I'm trying to do, I think that'll be okay. Yeah, something I forgot to mention is that you can also use this technique to make these, these like little button things. Thank you, Evil Dead! Yo-ho! We basically have all our little parts. Again, they're not perfect, but for the purposes of this video, they will do. <laughs> So anyway, so now I've cut this, the bridge of the thing, so that it roughly fits there. But as you can see, when I put this here, you can see that that, that sort of works. But to show you another technique, I'm going to use a little bit of heat forming to put a little bit of curve into this. I have now removed my uh, self-healing mat because I will be now using this, the heat gun, 
and this thing may look like a hair dryer, but this thing generates serious heat. And I definitely have to agree with something that Evil Ted gets asked all the time, is that, oh, can I use a hair dryer? The answer is no. And the reason why is because a hair dryer will warm your hair, and I'll just get things warm. This thing will get things hot to the point of almost melting. You actually want to heat up the foam to a point where you can actually form it. Definitely go buy a heat gun. It's totally worth the investment, especially considering that, you know, a basic one like this is only like 20 bucks. It's really not that expensive. So yeah. And also another question to get asked, what temperature should I use it on? As high as it'll go because you want it to get as hot as possible within reason without melting it, of course. And definitely a key to this is to definitely not hold it in one place for too long. You want to be like this a little bit, you know, up and down. You don't want to let it get too hot because otherwise then uh, bad things will happen and the other thing is i'm wearing these these sort of like fuzzy gloves which sort of work i had a pair that was really good but they have mysteriously vanished uh, <laughs> I, I can't imagine why <laughs> well, i keep my workshop so clean i can't imagine why they disappeared <laughs> another good idea to avoid this is to get a piece of wood or something like that and then you could just hold it down like that Evil Ted often uses a tool called a foam anvil, which he made himself, and this is basically my version, and yes, it's been painted over and stuff, is that you take the part and you basically bend it over this. But since this part is so small, I think I want to try something a little bit different. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try to uh, bend it around this little metal pipe that I have that I've now conveniently stuck into my little tool holder thing here. I've realized that this piece is really small and it's really hard to show how to do this. So I'm going to use this bigger piece and I'm going to demonstrate on this piece so you could notice that starting off this is all kind of you know matte and you know and all that so but however when i use the heat gun the outer layer is actually going to start to melt and it's going to get like a sheen to it and that's good that's almost the point you want to stop okay so and you want to do it on both sides See? Now this foam is now holding its shape. If I just try to take it like this and just bend it, it doesn't really hold it. It's already cooling off. So yeah, so that's the basic process of heat forming. So, I'm gonna basically do that with this piece because it's really small. <laughs> I have to say that that might have a little bit more curve then uh, it probably should, but at least that'll fit on her nose really well, and it could just simply be that her nose has a lot more curve and stuff around it. So I think I'm just gonna run with that, and again, for the purposes of this video, that shows basically how the heat forming process works and all that, so um, I like that, so I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So now the final step is simply gluing all these components together, which I will once again do with a little bit of CA as soon as I get it open. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> That's the one big thing I don't like about CA as well, is that unless you seal it really well, is that that glue gets all over the place and then it seals the thing up and you have to cut it open and stuff and bleh. All right, so just, there they are glued together. Uh, we'll have to wait a little bit for them to dry before I try putting them on the plushie. But um, I do have to say that these are not exactly what I call a replication of those. This piece should really be much more flat and go over the top, but I think it fit the plushie really well. And um, I have to say, for the purposes of this video and just demonstrating on how would you do something like this, I think that it accomplished what it was trying to do, so. <laughs> So I hope you did learn something in that, uh, hopefully you definitely go watch Evil Ted Smith. He is awesome because he's a professional prop maker who's been doing this for like 30 years. So he knows all the, the really good techniques. So now that the part is drying, let's talk about painting a little bit. So the first thing you should do is take the heat gun and go over the entire part again and basically get that sheen, which basically melts the outer layer of the foam and then basically seals it. But to really see, you want to use something like this called Plasti Dip, which is basically a rubber coat, and you spray a couple coats of this on, and it basically seals the foam, because the problem with foam is that it's foam. It basically acts like a sponge and absorbs paint, so you have to basically put that on first so that it doesn't absorb the paint. And then you obviously want to use a paint, 
whatever, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch from acrylic, spray paint, enamels, and ugh, it's a complicated thing, but then you want to put the paint on, and then once that's dry, then you most likely want to use something like Krylon, a crystal clear acrylic, you basically want to use something like a clear coat and seal everything in, in a clear coat so that if you damage, if it gets scratched, it's not going to scratch the paint, it's going to scratch the the uh, clear. I know that was kind of simplified, it's a little bit more involved than that, but I'm trying to show you the basic, almost in a way, Cliff Notes version of this process, so you know, oh, you do this, 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 and that, so that hopefully you can learn how to do this, because yeah, definitely, this can be very overwhelming at first, because there's so much stuff that, uh, in some ways, that you need to know how to do, but definitely, just go for it. If there's one piece of advice I can give foam smithers, or people who want to start learning how to build this kind of stuff, is just go for it. You will learn more by trying and failing than not trying at all. So, and definitely ask questions, of course, ask, you know, in a way, specific questions. Don't ask, oh, how do I make armor X, you know, or something like that, or how do I make this costume? It's like, no, it's like, it's not a person's job to tell you how to build a specific costume. It's like, it's more like, how do I build an arm, you know, a piece, or, oh, I don't know how to build that, or, oh, what paint should I use? You know, that those kinds of questions might be more, uh... Uh, better questions. That's part of the reason why I make this video because that's what makes the maker community so awesome is that you know It's like oh, I need help with this or oh, I learned a really cool technique here Sharing information and helping out other people. That's just part of the community. and I think that's awesome So yo, and that's part of the reason why I kind of wanted to make this video. So now I have something to show you a spectacle ah. <laughs> It's like yeah, I would say that this is not spectacular, but I think it's okay considering what time I spent on it and Again, they're not as uh, straight as um, the one in the original, but I think that's mostly because her nose is much more curved. But um, I think they look okay. Again, um, what would I have done differently? In some ways, that's almost the, the thing when you build stuff like this. It's like, okay, it came out okay. What would I have done to make it better? Um, I would have gone and I would have gotten a pipe that would have been that diameter, the outer diameter, and I would have done that because that's the big problem is that the outer circle is not really <laughs> circle-like. The inside one, I think, was okay. Um, and I probably would have put that, uh, the nose bridge a little bit higher. But again, I, for the purposes of hopefully teaching people about this kind of thing, I hope that you learned something, and, uh, if you didn't, go watch Evil Ted's channel, because he definitely knows what he's doing, and he's awesome, so, yo! But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you for commenting, liking, and subscribing, and until next time, this is Blue Star. Stay strong, and pony on. Blue Star out.